this is a teaching moment. Hey guys, welcome to the show. We're back to the card reviews and today we're going to take a look at the mage cards of Forged in the Barrens. And I don't want to get ahead of myself. But be warned, because these cards are very interesting. So, without further ado, let's get going. We're going to kick things off with Oasis Ally. It's a mage secret and has Frost School. And it reads, when a friendly minion is attacked, summon a 3-6 water elemental. When I first saw this card, I immediately thought about a splitting image. And I must say that this is the way that splitting image should have been from the beginning. But before I get ahead of myself, let's just talk about it and what it does first. So basically, you get a conditional water elemental that can already attack on turn 4. And that is pretty good. A water elemental is a 3-6 and it freezes. So... That is already very good. Um, you might actually consider after the rotation to run Water Elemental in itself because it's just a good minion. It's sturdy and it freezes stuff. So that is very good in itself. And you basically get a deal for one mana less with this. So arguably this is for me the strongest mage secret that was ever printed. But it has a downside. Because if you want to activate this, you need something on board and your opponent has to help you out. Also, there is another thing. Because secrets are always only as strong as the other secrets they are in a pool with. Um, if you remember the Kobolds and Catacombs meta. That was the first meta where uh, rogues got secrets. And... None of those saw play because they did such different things. What are the mage secrets even? There's mirror image. Mirror image is very weak. It's not a good secret. It might get better because there are no more lackeys after the rotation. Counter spell is an okay secret if you use it correctly. Ice Barrier is very specific in what it does. It's a very defensive one. And there's also Rigged Fair Game, which is a very strong secret. But against some classes, it will never trigger. For example, against Hunter, it's never going to trigger. And if it triggers, it's way too late. And the last one is Netherwind Portal, because I believe Netherwind is from Ashes of Outland. And Netherwind is an okay to good secret. So overall, we have a secret pool that is not too bad. And if you run this in a pure secret mage, this is the strongest one, I think. Uh, also, on a, on a footnote, this makes Ring Toss way stronger since there's only one, two, three, four, five, and this six secrets in the pool, you are almost guaranteed to hit this of ring toss if it is corrupted so that is something to keep in mind what are the synergies uh, before i talk about that i want to say that the loss of ancient mysteries and flock mage is really hurting this secret if those two were still in the pool this would be so much better but maybe even overpowered and you can't print it then uh, also current tall mage Current homage would uh, synergize with this so well. It's crazy how good current homage would, would be with this. Um, but there are other things that synergize with this. For example, Archaeologist. Archaeologist fetches this, and you can play this on th turn 3. If, it, if the Archaeologist hasn't died, it helps activate it. Almost better is Game Master, because you can coin out Game Master on turn 2, uh, into this and then the game master must be taken care of because of the ongoing effect it's a threat actually especially in the early game and the opponent will try anything to remove it including running into it with with a, with a minion so that helps activating it 
there is another thing that is pretty nice about this and that is if you have an empty board you played this on turn three with an empty board or the board got taken care of somehow uh, without activating this it uh, activates a called conjurer so that it has going for it so all in all I think this is a very solid card you don't necessarily have to play this in a secret mage and as in a secret mage this is particularly strong the question is is there still a secret mage might actually be the case because there are still some nice secrets and uh, secret synergy cards but you can also play this in a controlling style deck because uh, the water elemental is just such a nice controlling tool a nice mid-range minion that you can just use to your advantage so all in all very nice secret very solid very versatile I like this the next card I want to talk about is arcane luminary it's a three mana four three elemental and it reads cards that didn't start in your deck cost two less but not less than one let's talk about the body first the body isn't too great but it's okay it's nothing to write home about but it's still fine a three mana four three you don't lose any stats that's actually pretty good but it would be nice if it had more health than attack that is a little bit of a downside if you look at this card I think you think about leyline manipulator and the thing is yes that's quite similar but Leyline Manipulator had a battle cry. This is an ongoing effect. You only get the effect as long as the Arcane Luminary is on board. And Leyline, you could just play out and uh, take advantage of the, uh, of the battle cry. I think you should compare this more to Summoning Portal for generated stuff. Summoning Portal just has an effect for minions. This is every card that you generated somehow, you discovered or uh, got a hold of somehow else. The question becomes more, what are you supposed to do with this? So you generate stuff and then play this and your stuff. So the idea is that it potentially pays for itself, becoming a zero mana 4-3 which which sounds pretty appealing actually there must be a drawback and the drawback is generating stuff is random and if you generate if you build your deck around this guy then your deck lacks consistency because what are you doing because most of the stuff that you get is random uh, also it comes down late you don't tempo this out on turn three because it will just die because of the low health and that is a huge downside and something to keep in mind for sure on the other hand reducing the cost of cards can be very valuable this guy is worth it if you can reduce the cost up to four mana and that doesn't sound too bad if you ask me so what are the synergies I guess that deck of lunacy is something you can play with this evocation for sure and discover in general so you want to play this in the same deck as one thief or maybe Paxis smuggler uh, that also generates stuff we also have a new card called ruined orb which also kind of synergizes with this so there are actually quite some tools that mage can take advantage of to make this guy work is it worth though hmm because this guy basically screams play me in casino mage and as i already said casino mage doesn't have a real consistent game plan are you planning on winning or are you just planning on doing random stuff so that's something that holds this card back although it's actually not too bad but I think it's more like a niche thing in the new meta and won't see any play 
Next up, we have a rhyme tongue. Rhyme tongue is a three mana minion. It has a three four body and it reads after you cast a frost spell, summon a one one elemental that freezes. Body first. The body is absolutely fine. A three mana three four that's a spider attack without the mech tag. If you look at the effect of this guy, you are reminded of a lot of things. So the first thing that came to my mind is once again Violet Teacher or Satyr Overseer, maybe Gibberling. Uh, a new card in the set is Kolkar Pack Runner, which is also quite similar to this. Uh, Veteran War Medic is another one. So what are you supposed to do with this guy? I think this seems like on the surface as a defensive minion, but I think that's not the purpose because the elementals that it summons freeze. So the idea is not so much to be defensive. I think this is an aggressive card. It's all about shutting down your opponent. Most of the freezing stuff that you play with, I mean the spells, the, the frost spells, are freezing spells. And they shut the opponent off from attacking. And that is something to keep in mind. So the, the idea of this guy is, you slam him down, you spam a bunch of frost spells, and then you shut the uh, opponent out of the game. Because he can't do anything. Uh, his minions are frozen, maybe his face is... No, his fa face can't be frozen because Frostbolt is leaving. Um, but basically that's the gist of it. You shut the opponent out. Which makes this a potentially very unfun card for the opponent at least. Um, at the same time, since you shut out the opponent, you, you, know, you have your own minions, you have your spells, and you just go face. And this is why I think this is actually an aggressive card. The reality of things is we live in Rush Stone. And this is an absolute aggro magnet. The opponent has to remove this no matter what they do because it will keep generating value, keep freezing stuff, and that has to be stopped. And that is why this will be removed pretty much immediately. We have so many rush minions now, and there are enough spells that can take care of this. So the downside is also that it's bound to frost spells. And I took a look at all the frost spells that are in the game after the rotation and there are not that many good ones there is snap freeze which is arguably okay there is also cone of cold and cone of cold might be okay but is very expensive this guy would be insane with ray of frost which rotates so, all in all, you must say that... Um, I forgot Flurry. Flurry is also, uh, also in the game. We are going to talk about Flurry in a second. S all in all, you have to have quite some card draw to support this. And that also weakens the card. But the upside is still, you potentially lock your opponent out of the game. What are the synergies? I just told you it's Frost Spells. Um, uh, foremost, it's Snap Freeze. Uh, maybe Oasis Ally. It's, uh, Oasis Ally is also a Frost Spell. And where do you play this? You play this in Temple Mage. You want to uh, maybe... You play a mage that kind of falls behind in the early to mid game and in the mid game you come back somehow and then you slam this and then you freeze stuff. I don't know that if that's very good. Right now, there is not enough support for this guy, but we should be looking out for uh, future frost spells that might come, and then this guy might be actually a threat for the meta. So, we will have to wait and see what's going to happen. Next up, we have my favorite mage card of the set, and it's Refreshing Spring Water. It's a 4-mana spell, and it reads, 
draw two cards, refresh two mana crystals for each spell drawn. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I think the best comparison to this card that we've already seen is Skull of Gul'dan. It also reminds me a little bit of Lunar Visions, a little bit of Ancient Mysteries. It's kind of a solemn vigil, also cutting class. Free Admission is also a card that is similar. And last but not least, Hand of Gul'dan. But I think that Skull of Gul'dan is the closest comparison. Maybe Free Admission, maybe Free Admission because Free Admission uh, wants you to build your deck in a certain way and this does the same thing but before I get ahead of myself let's compare this to Arcane Intellect first if you compare these two cards this is one more mana than Arcane Intellect and there is another downside compared to Arcane Intellect Arcane Intellect can come down on turn 3 you play this on turn 4 beforehand you can't unless you coin it out on turn three that's another thing but then you yes it will refresh the two mana crystals you will have four mana on turn three with this so that's actually might be a very good play so when are you playing this above arcane intellect and I think if you hit just one spell with this it's already worth it and if you hit two spells with it, that makes it potentially broken. Uh, you might have flashbacks to cutting class, because that's also pretty much zero mana. If you hit one spell, it's two mana draw two. That's pretty good. If you had two spells, that's zero mana deal uh, draw two. And cutting class is a good card. So this must be two, right? Hmm. Yes, if you run this card in a at least spell heavy deck it doesn't have to be necessarily a deck that runs pure spells but the thing is you kind of have to run some minions right but the moment you run some minions this becomes kind of a gamble but still as i said a two mana draw two is pretty good so i i think you still run this if you have a, a deck that is spell heavy or runs at least maybe 10 spells 10 to 15 spells you are very likely to get your mana back so the downside is you can't cast this before turn 4 unless you have the coin and if you hit two minions with this you are super sad really sad uh, also because of the four mana it's kind of slow and needs some setup but on the other side the upside of a zero mana draw two is undeniably awesome you you want this spell if you run a deck that at least has like half of your deck is spells then you for sure run refreshing spring water there are some synergies with this like mana biscuit mana biscuit can uh, get you additional mana after having cast this and spells in general every spell you hit with this is great I think you run this in a spell heavy deck as I just said and I think this is a great card for Mozaki OTK mage so uh, which I think is still a thing it can be we're gonna talk about that in a second so I think this is in almost any circumstance better than Arcane Intellect and you will run Refreshing Spring Water instead of Arcane Intellect unless you have a pure minion mage, which in standard doesn't make really sense if you ask me. A very good card, very good. Next up we have Ruined Orb. It's a two mana spell Arcane. It says deal two damage, discover a spell. Okay, so what is this card? Uh, we actually kind of know this card because it's Arcane Breath without the Dragon Restriction. Uh, it also kind of is reminiscent of Mark Shot, scaled down a little, and it uh, can go face. So, is deal 2 damage for 2 mana good? 
the answer is no. It's not very efficient, but it has the additional value part of discovering a spell. And you mustn't forget that the discover that the discover pool right now is as narrow as it can be because we're at the start of the rotation. So, is this a good card? It has downsides. It's kind of slow because if you want to play this on curve on turn two, it's very unlikely to kill a one drop because all pretty much all of them are one threes. And there's also frenzy stuff going on. So you do you want to hit a 1-3 and trigger the frenzy? Or the crimson guy from priest, which makes it that priest can heal it and then it gains attack. So that's a little bit sketchy. Uh, also, it's a reactive card. It's not really proactive. It doesn't develop. It's more of a reactive card that needs planning ahead, especially the discover card, uh, di discover, especially the discovering uh, a spell part needs you to be able to plan ahead. But it has the upside of cycling itself. And as I already mentioned, it can go phase, which is very important for Mozaki. So what are synergies? Spell damage in general. Uh, any spell damage minion with this makes it efficient already because it becomes a Frostbolt. And Frostbolt is a very good card, as we all remember. Also, there is Arcane Luminary because this guy discovers something for Arcane Luminary. Where do you put this then? You don't put this in an aggro deck. You put this in a controlling slash value deck. And I think you actually put this in a Mozaki Mage and this enables Mozaki Mage once again. We don't have Arcane Missiles anymore. But this is kind of a replacement because you can still go for the OTK. There is Encounters Flow, there is Cram Session, there is Refreshing Spring Water, there is Imprisoned Phoenix. You can still OTK with Mozaki thanks to this guy. So in that regard... It's a little niche, not too much. You can run this in pretty much every mage deck just because of the discover aspect. And you will be very happy if you discover this. But all in all, it's a solid card, but not too amazing. Very solid though, very solid. The next card is Flurry. It's a frost spell, of course, and it reads freeze a random enemy minion, upgrades when you have five mana, then it becomes freeze two random enemy minions, and at 10 mana, it becomes freeze three random enemy minions. So, first of all, this is a freezing potion at rank one. And freezing potion is a very bad card. On turn 5, this becomes a cheaper but random Ray of Frost. And at 10 mana, this becomes a Cone of Cold that is random. Maybe you already get the vibe that I'm not con really sold on this card. If you run this card, you have a game plan with one big win condition. So... This card wants you to survive to the later stages to make a game-winning play. That is the idea of this card. You don't run this unless you have some kind of combo or maybe an OTK. I already hinted at the downsides. Before turn 5, this is just a plain, terrible, super low impact card. Uh, you freeze just one thing. Yes, it's zero mana, but you, pr uh, you you freeze one thing that could be a 1-1, one, one, and then you're very sad. And the randomness doesn't make it better. Against aggro, this will heal you for just 1 to 4 on turn 5. And also, the biggest problem with this, I think, is it's a terrible top deck, and super situational. 
If your opponent has a very wide board, this doesn't do anything. If your opponent has one thing on the board, this is pretty nice, and then you can develop or do something else with your mana, then it's okay. But uh, we want to we want our cards to be as flexible as possible, and this just doesn't fit that build. But it still has the upside of being cheap. And in the right situation, it might save you. That is the only thing going for it, I think. It has synergies. It has synergies with Warden Dawn Grabs, which we are going to talk about in a minute. It has synergy with Rhyme Tongue. It has synergy with Cone of Cold. I think because uh, it's coded as such that you play Cone of Cold first, and then this will freeze something that isn't frozen already. In that regard, it has synergy with Cone of Cold. Uh, also with Mozaki, it's a zero mana spell which gives additional spell damage. Also in Mozaki Mage, you want to be defensive and this kind of fits the bill. And you mustn't forget, as a zero mana spell, this is great with Gadgets and Auctioneer. But Mage doesn't have any other zero mana spells, so hmm. So where does this go? In a control deck. In a controlling deck that wants to heal, this is kind of a heal because you don't get attacked in the face. And it goes in, in Mozaki OTK Mage, just because it freezes. But does it make the main deck? I must say, I don't think so. I think this is a bad card. I think this is the worst of the ranked spells and you never main deck this. Sometimes you will be happy if you discover it, but bleh, that's, this is just not a good card. Next up is a legendary already, fitting the bill of Flurry, but way better. It's Warden Dawn Grasp. It's a 4 mana 3-3, and it has a battle cry, freeze all enemy minions. If any are already frozen, deal 4 damage to them instead. So, there are not that many similarities except for Frost Nova. Uh, this is a Frost Nova with a 1 mana 3-3 three, three attached to it. And that is pretty good actually. We all know that Frost Nova is a good card. Sadly, it rotates. So, this is the... Um, th this is what we get instead of Frost Nova. Uh, the body is in itself not that strong, but since you have to think about it as a 1 mana 3 3, that's actually pretty good. Also, if this comes down on turn 4, it can help you later on to uh, trade up or down into something and take favorable trades. So, I think that's pretty good. Is this a game-winning legendary though? No, it's a utility minion. You play this alongside something that you want to actually win the game with. This is just helping you out. And I think that's pretty valuable actually. The downside of this card is it doesn't go in every deck. If you open this up, you have to play specific mage decks. Uh, also, it's a legendary. Frost Nova, you can run two of. This only is a one-off in your deck, so it you won't draw it as consistently. Um, another downside compared to Frost Nova is that it's a little slower. Frost Nova comes down on turn three. This comes down on turn four. If you coin it out, okay, it comes down on turn three, but yeah. And also it's situational. If your opponent is a control warrior that doesn't play anything, this is a dead card in your hand. Uh, also, it doesn't deal with effects on board, like, um, yeah, you flame strike if things are already frozen, maybe you cone of cold it or flurry it uh, before you played this, and then it flame strikes the board, but on a board with uh, a lot of death rattles, this is not as great, so it's a little bit situational. One more downside that I just thought of is, uh, Dealing 4 damage to things is a little bit contradictory to freezing, because if you freeze things, then for the pure value of freezing, so they can't attack. So why do you flame strike on top? 
that is a little bit contradictory. It's not bad. It's if you um, can remove something at the same time while freezing other stuff, that's not too bad. I'm not complaining, but it's a little bit contradictory and uh, I guess they wanted to push the card a little bit further. So, okay, that's well, I guess we'll take it. So what are the synergies of this card? Freezes in general. You want to have freezes in your deck to, so you can take uh, advantage of the bonus attached to this. Otherwise, what uh, kind of deck are you playing this in? Uh, of course, in control decks. You run this as a utility in a control deck and I think it's a very nice addition for OTK decks because OTK decks want to go long and draw as many cards as possible and survive as long as possible and this helps you do this. So I think that Warden Dawngrasp is a very solid card. It has its downsides, it has sides to it that make it a little weak but it's quite solid and if you open this up, you shouldn't be too sad about it. Next up, we have a Wildfire. It's a two mana mage spell. It's a fire spell, as the name suggests. And it reads, increase the damage of your hero power by one. So, this is a shadow form, but cheaper. Or a Baku effect, not starting the game. Or you could say Justica True Heart, or maybe Charged Hammer in some way. But I think that Shadow Form fits the bill the most. So Shadow Form never saw play. But there's a reason to that. First of all, Shadow Form is three mana, that's way too expensive. And Priest has another game plan. This fits the game plan of mage way better than shadow form does with priest and also it's just two mana it's a little cheaper is it cheap enough though i think this card has a lot of downsides first of all it's very slow and awkward you play this on two and do nothing you just prepare yourself for the future, which can be good. But the thing is, do you hero power on turn three then? Do you want to hero power on turn three? So you don't plan ahead one turn, so you plan ahead two turns. So you want to play on turn four something and a two mana thing and then hero power? It sounds a little sketchy to me. Also, the other thing about this is if you don't draw this early, if you draw this on turn 8, if you draw this on turn 7, even on turn 5, I think this is a very bad top deck because the game has developed already so much and you haven't upgraded your hero power. That's a very big downside for this card. Yes, you run two of those and the second copy will make your hero power deal damage by three. That's pretty good actually. But... A top deck in the late game like this is maybe game losing. It has its upsides though. You effectively double the effect of your hero power. Instead of dealing one, you deal two. Dealing two is pretty strong. And also the second copy. If you manage to play the second copy early on somehow, your hero power turns into Frostbolt and that's very good. It also can go face. Uh, in that regard, that it deals three damage, it reminds me of Bazaar Burglary. Uh, Bazaar Burglary is actually not a bad card, and if you can, uh, if you manage to get that hero power, uh, that's actually pretty good. Although Bazaar Burglary uh, has two durability, the the weapon of Bazaar Burglary has two durability. You will have to spend two mana just to do deal the three damage, but. If you can manage to build this up to uh, build your hero power up to three damage, that's actually a threat to the opponent, because it will just keep hero powering their face. Yeah, ten turns, but it's still a threat because maybe you have other burn and stuff. 
So in that regard, this card still has things going for it. What are other synergies this card has? Uh, we get Fallen Hero back, for example. Fallen Hero helps this card uh, out a lot. Also, there's Koldara Drake. If you have managed to play two of uh, two copies of this before you putting down a Koldara Drake, Koldara Drake will have uh, will fireball your opponent. That sounds not too bad. Uh, also, Reckless Apprentice loves this card. We're going to talk about Reckless Apprentice in a second. And Mordresh, of course. This is pretty much that uh, the card that enables Mordresh, I think. So you put this in a Mordresh deck, for sure. Uh, in general, in a control deck that wants to hero power a lot. Janelai would love this card. But Janelai is not uh, around anymore. So, is this a good card? I think if you define a good card in a high power level in what it does, then yes, but it's super narrow in what it does. So in that regard, I don't think this is a very good card, but you will need to run this in a Mordresh deck. So in, let's just say good when good. The next card I want to talk about is Reckless Apprentice. It's a 4 mana 3-5 and it has a battle cry. Fire your hero power at all enemies. So, body first. A 4 mana 3-5 is nothing to write home about. It's pretty much a Sengen without the taunt, but it has a battle cry instead. And that battle cry is... Huh... This battle cry is basically Twilight Flamecaller. Uh, or you could say this is a Arcane Explosion attached to a 3-5. So you get a 2-mana 3-5 with an Arcane Explosion. And that sounds actually pretty good. But the downside about this is like Twilight Flamecaller. Twilight Flamecaller saw actual play, by the way, just because Dude Paladin was a thing back in the day. The downside of this is it's a little slower than Twilight Flamecaller. It comes down a little later. And it is very unimpactful if your hero power is not upgraded. If your hero power deals one damage, you get a 3-5 that deals one damage to the opposing side of the board. Uh, also deals face damage, by the way. Hmm. So that's something uh, I, I just realized, and that's not too bad. But still. Uh, and I think that most of the time, this guy is going to be too slow. Because if you, you, you won't always have your hero power upgraded, and then it's just a 3-5 that deals one damage to everything on the other side. The upside is though, you get a very cost efficient minion if your hero power is upgraded. Then it becomes a consecration on top with a 3-5. If you upgraded your hero power two times and you play this, wow, then this is pretty, pretty insane. So you have to have a lot of setup to make Reckless Apprentice work. And that is, also a downside of course because cards that need setup we don't actually want to play those we want to play good cards so it's a very strange minion that isn't actually too bad so what are synergies with this guy synergies with this guy are as with wildfire fallen hero Koldara drake uh, and mordrish of course mordrish is the big payoff card for this uh, and it goes in the same deck as Wildfire, in a control deck that wants to hero power. Is this a good card? I think Wildfire is a way worse card than this. But at the same time, you must play this in the same deck as Wildfire. Funnily enough, this makes Wildfire playable. And Wildfire makes this playable. So, you want if you want to build a deck with this, you need Wildfire and you kind of need Mordrish too. It's a little bit strange. 
Last, but definitely not least, is Mordrish Fire Eye. It's a 10 mana 10 10 and it has a battle cry. If you've dealt 10 damage with your hero power this game, deal 10 damage to all enemies. Whew, okay, let that sink in for a second. Wow. So what does this card do? So this card is basically Cthulhu the Shattered. It's very similar in what it does because it needs setup and then it lets you win the game. Uh, so is this a good card? Is Cthulhu the Shattered a good card? Cthulhu the Shattered is okay. Is this okay? Is this maybe bad? <laughs> Let's talk about it. So, the battle cry is so freaking insane. You will you will deal with this battle cry with almost any board on the opponent's side. It will take care of almost anything. I can't uh, imagine. Okay, Deathwing. There is Deathwing. Death. It won't kill Deathwing, but it will kill anything else. So that's pretty appealing, isn't it? The downside is this guy is super slow. It's 10 mana. And the question also is how reliably can you play this on turn 10 with the effect? Because you want to slam this down on turn 10 and you want to win the game. How reliably can you do that? I think that Reckless Apprentice might help a lot because it reads fire your hero power at all enemies, so it counts toward this. So you want to play this in the same deck as Reckless Apprentice, no matter what. You have to play this in the same uh, in the same deck. But the upside is the upside itself. If you can slam this on turn ten, you are so favored. You might play this in a deck that also runs Fireball, that also runs Ruined Orb or other kinds of burn. And it's not your only thing that goes face, I assume. Also, your hero power deals a lot of damage until you can do this. So, in that regard, it's very likely that just playing this on turn 10 will end the game. This makes this very interesting. I'm pretty sure that uh, Team 5 did enough testing to make sure that uh, games don't necessarily end on turn 10. But on the other hand, it seems like this is very insane. What do you want to run with this guy? You need, as I said, Re Reckless Apprentice. You want Wildfire. You want Fallen Hero in that deck. And you don't just tempo out Fallen Hero because you want to take advantage of Fallen Hero, so you maybe play it on turn 4 and then Hero Power something down. And you want Tour Guide. You want Tour Guide in that deck. Things that synergize with your Hero Power. So as you can see, uh, there is a certain shell that you have to build this around. Uh, and the other things that go in that deck, those are a little bit of a mystery to me. Because is that a controlling deck? Or is that uh, an aggressive deck that you run this? Uh, that's really... Hmm, it's a little petrifying and I can't really put my finger on it. But this is the, uh, the centerpiece that you build your deck around for sure. Because he is the big finisher. You want to land this. You wanna, And you want to draw him. If you don't draw him, you are very, very sad. So you also need some card draw and stuff. So, making this guy work isn't as easy as it seems, I think. So, in that regard, and not being as easy to build around is a good thing. Because if you just slam uh, 29 random cards and this, and this wins you the game, that wouldn't be good design. So, in that regard, this is very nice design. Because it's very exciting, the Valkyrie is insane. Uh, and also, it has a little bit of a restriction because you are bound to your hero power. 
I really like Modrish. I think he is a something that I can kind of relate to. Also that he plays guitar on his axe and stuff. That I really like that. Is he good though? And I think that he is not because the archetype in itself is just too slow. I don't think you should craft this unless you want to have fun. Unless you want to pyroblast a lot of stuff on your opponent's side. That is going to be a lot of fun. But I don't think that Mordrish is a good card. If you want to win. If you want to have fun, that's something totally different. So Mordrish, you are cool. But we're not going to get married, my friend. So that's for Mage. There are not too many things to talk about in mage I think because mage as the other classes goes through a lot of changes and the introduction of hero power mage that Blizzard tried to make work in so many iterations already is a fresh new start to the class. What will mage actually do though? I think that mage actually still goes with Mozaki. I think that Mozaki is the most reliable thing mage has right now. The hero power thing is going to be fun, but it's not going to be good. And my, maybe, maybe there's still a secret mage around that can do stuff, uh, which I really doubt because flock mage is leaving. Uh, on the other hand, there are some pretty nice tools that mage got this expansion, uh, none of which are absolutely insane. There have been other cards that are totally insane. But mage is kind of a cockroach. Sometimes they are, um, sometimes mages are not that great in the meta. And this might be a meta where a mage has to pull his head out of the mud. This is what I think. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.